LSU Odyssey Oddcast. How's it going, everybody? It is I, Ron Sullivan, and um, welcome to our New Year's Eve special. So many bands over the last week have had to cancel their big-time New Year's Eve gigs. And it's really sad. Uh, Fish had to cancel their Madison Square Garden stand. My Morning Jacket, my favorite, possibly my favorite band of all time. You know, I, I love the Stones, big Zeppelin fan, of course, Pink Floyd. Um, but, you know, a, a bunch, a bunch, I listen to a bunch of different types of music, uh, but really, My Morning Jacket, unbelievable band. I saw them at their last New Year's Eve stand, Denver, 2017, First Bank Center. They played three nights, the 29th, 30th, and the 31st, and it was unbelievable. Two and a half hours, first two nights, three hours the third night. Unbelievable madness, fireworks madness, pyro pyrotechnics, which they just never do. They're, they're an indie band. It was just crazy. And they were going to do something similar for this year at the Mission Ballroom in Denver. And that would have been quite the event, but sadly that was canceled as well. There's been so many things canceled. Bowl games as well. Um, I think, what, who was it? Texas A&M, UCLA, a few others who've had to cancel their games. There's been a lot of others that have moved ahead though, thankfully. But, um, will LSU's Texas Bowl game move forward? Will there be enough negative COVID tests to keep, you know, somewhat that of that uh, 50 scholarship mark alive? There's still some space to activate some walk-ons, and you could do that in, in a variety of positions, because I think these guys need this game. Um... You're t you know, you're talking about B.J. Ojolari. He needs to get a few sacks in this game. Uh, Mason Smith coming back. He, he would just be beautiful for him to get some sacks in this game, get some pressures, get, make some big plays, cause a turnover or something like that. be fantastic for him. Sage Ryan, I hope he to see him back, you know, absolutely flying around like a madman out there. I think, I think we'll see that. Dwight McLaughlin, this is a big game for him, potentially playing in you know, in his hometown of Houston for the first time since he left the city to come play for, for LSU. I mean, they, they spent the time there to, to prepare for the UCLA game, but, you know, this is going back to Energy Stadium where they practiced in that Rose Bowl lead-up week. And, you know, that's where some guys had some injuries. Jared Small got injured on that turf at that stadium. Um, do we want... <laughs> to, I, it's just, I don't know. Do we want to practice there? Do we want to practice somewhere else? We'll see what decisions they uh, take with interim head coach Brad Davis leading the helm. The first black LSU head coach ever. The first black coach in LSU history leading our Tigers into probably the most adverse situation ever in the program's history. When you're talking about going into a bowl game, the first bowl game in almost two years. Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And we, know, we understand the pandemic has caused a lot of this attrition, but so is the roster management. That's why we're, we, we are also in this situation too. And so we just need to be very, very careful. Okay? I think the best thing to do is to be testing your players right now getting those negative tests out of the way, I'm mean, sorry, those positive tests out of the way so they can do the five-day quarantine and get back at it. That would be my recommendation. But at the same time, at the same time, there are grave health concerns, uncertainty about rushing young athletes back you know, into sports like this. 
we've seen it in soccer where there's been a, a just an absolute rash of of cardiac arrest problems. We saw it with Christian Eriksen right there before the world on the world stage at Euro 2020 collapsing because of the crazy pandemic caused um, delay in the schedule where where these guys are cram you know these these uh, football governing bodies are deciding to cram these games and get every possible game in unnecessary international friendlies all these stupid exhibition games and they're putting their guys through the paces for for money and um, you're seeing cardiac arrest problems happen big time you know some of these great players Sergio Aguero from Barcelona going down I mean it's it's unheard of frankly and it's very dangerous we don't even know the long-term problems these are just the current issues from rushing athletes back from COVID-19 and that's just in soccer we understand that it's a cardiovascular sport affects the heart but so does football and I'm wondering how it's going to affect linemen especially the big boys that's what freaks me out how are the big guys going to be able to handle coming back from COVID and playing you know I mean that's that's no joke right there coming back from being sick absolutely having the worst symptoms possible and then uh, you go right back into the into the fray. I think LSU has been smart and kept the players who've had the, the worst enough symptoms away from the field continuously. You've seen that. But what happens when you're asymptomatic and you still go out there and compete full on after you know you're you're cleared to come back and play? That's a concern there. Um, what would be the number of players? to test positive for you to say this game should be canceled. What's the what's the number for the for the governing bodies of college football to say enough's enough. We we got to have safety being the main concern here. Um, if safety is the main concern as they always will will tell you, they probably would have canceled the entire bowl season. But then again, do we want that? Does does everyone want cancellations no because you know you look at the Oklahoma game the other night you know you look at these these things can still move forward we can do it with you know semi capacity that type of thing we can we can do this and um, I just really hope this this game goes forward I've I've been heard been told from a source that you know, I'm hearing that we're going to know how many players LSU are down within the next day or two here. And uh, we'll see what's going on. There should also be um, official announcement regarding a certain coach coming very soon. So keep your eyes peeled on that as well. Everybody, Happy New Year. Let's hope 2022 can be a little bit better than 2020, 2021, because, you know, you had 2020 being a shithole, 2021 being kind of shithole part two, but slightly better, I don't know, um, in my personal life, I guess, for me, but, like, as of the, as, as a world, I, I can't really say that, um, and I just, there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of people that are hurting, and I just want to say to all of you, anyone who's listening, who's going through tough times, I've been there. And uh, we can get through this. Everybody can get through this. We can get it through, through it together. And uh, you don't have to be alone. Reach out to me. Reach out to anybody. You know, there's people who love you. Anyway, I hope for 2022 to be a time of peace, love, and understanding.